So yes, the, the theme, as we said, of this movie is laziness, and uh, no sequence in the movie uh, sort of showcases that more than the Lakers scene. There's a scene in the movie where they go to a Lakers game. That's right. And uh, it's, it's, it's almost comical because it looks like a, like a cheap, it looks like a Saturday Night Live sketch or like a late night talk show sketch where there's all this B-roll of the Lakers, you know, prepping for the game and playing, and then it cuts to this tiny little set where there's like three rows of bleachers and everyone's just sitting there. And, uh, and there's Al Pacino and Johnny Depp for some reason. Uh, he doesn't even have to get up in the scene. Johnny Depp just showed up on set, sat there, they rolled for half a day, he collected his paycheck and left. Uh, and then it cuts to the reverse and it's Adam Sandler in front of a green screen with the Lakers superimposed behind him. And it looks horribly cheap and horribly lazy and that sort of sums up the entire execution of this movie. Every scene is just people standing around or sitting around. It's like a Star Wars prequel. Yeah, but he, he does, he goes up to Al Pacino and then like, we were talking about this scene before the movie started. One, one of the things on my list was that I expected Jill to somehow end up on the court of the Lakers. Game oh yeah. And do something embarrassing that would embarrass Jack or they would end up on the camera or something. But I thought she was gonna go out for the, the free throw contest or just walk out onto the court with the hot dog going, where am I? Where's oh, the bathroom? Someone, ac someone accidentally passes her the ball and she goes, whoa. Whoa! <laughs> and, and makes this crazy shot, and they go, yeah. and, and everyone's like, oh, you know. But filming at a Lakers game or staging one in in full scale yeah. would have been a lot of work. And movies aren't about work; they're about getting them made as quickly and as cheaply as possible, and yes. to inflate the budget to such a level to where you could pay yourself as much as possible. I think this film was 97.99% above the line <laughs> and, and the rest was below the line. Yeah, yeah. Well, that kind of goes into our next topic here. <laughs> Reportedly, the budget for this movie is $79 million. So the question is, if no time or effort or thought was put into anything concerning the production, where did all that money go? Our lawyers would like us to read the statement before oh, we proceed. Okay. Adam Sandler is a hack fraud con man. That's oh, what our lawyer. Oh, no, no, that's the wrong note. Oh, it's the other note from the lawyer? This is the one you're supposed to read. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll cut that part out. Okay. Adam Sandler is a horrible con man. Oh, no, hack. that's the wrong one, too. So how many wrong notes are I there? I don't know how these all got mixed up in here, but let me see. Try this one. I think this is it. We, Jay and Mike of Half in the Bag, are not accusing Adam Sandler or his cohorts, wait, or his associates of any criminal wrongdoing. These are merely the opinions of um, Mike and Jay. Okay. Um, oh, he stole all the money and embezzled it to all of his friends. This is what we'll call the, the, the Adam Sandler comedy scam. The great American Adam Sandler comedy swindle. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, you're right, Jay. Uh, this is roughly half the budget of the James Cameron film, The Titanic. Uh, I know there's inflation differences, of course, but whatever, $80 million is a large amount of money for a film that looks like it was shot in a weekend. Mm -hmm. That looks like mm -hmm. it's one of those skits that you see on like the Oscars before the Oscars, you know? <laughs> when they when they recreate a movie and yeah. they shoot it in five minutes yeah. with Billy Crystal, or like a, a, something you see on like the Conan O'Brien show or something. Well, we, we were discussing after we left the theater, um, at what point does something like this uh, cease to be able to be called a movie? Yeah. And I think this is it. Yeah. Because this is, there's, I, we mentioned general horror product placement. And I, I, in general, I don't like just hate product placement for no reason. I understand what it is, why it's there. Mm -hmm. And if it's sort of incorporated into the movie in a way that's sort of organic and makes sense, whatever. It's not yeah. a big deal. But this is a movie where they literally stop the film to have commercial breaks. Yes, there, literally. <laughs> there are commercials in the movie. Literal, literal commercials to where... Shameless doesn't even doesn't even begin to describe it. Yeah. Now, yeah, I, I agree. Product placement is fine. Um, 
and and movies cost a lot of money to make. They just do. And and sometimes that that profit margins razor thin when you're competing against other movies and 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 stuff like that. But Adam Sandler has this like well-established fan base, and he especially this movie really kind of emphasizes the point that he does not care. Oh yeah, absolutely. About any about the quality of his of his work. Yeah. And, and not that I saw all of his other films, but this this movie left me with this this weird feeling in the end. And we've made fun of the Zookeeper and really kind of stupid formulaic movies like that before. Yeah. I bet you the Zookeeper is a work of art compared to this. Yeah. I, I felt I felt swindled at the end, and I'm sure other people did after seeing it because they had those twins, the footage of the twins in the beginning, and then at the end they tack it on for like. Ten more minutes after the credits. Yeah, yeah, and and it's like, oh, it's supposed to fill you with like this, like, oh, twins are great. Yeah, it, to are, give you to give you the illusion that the movie is about something, about twins and their relationships. Yeah, and when the movie isn't about anything at all. Or just to or just to give you like some sort of warm-hearted feeling as you leave the theater, yeah. like, and to make you forget about the whole movie that you just saw. Yeah. And and shoving that in the beginning, shoving that in the end with no context or anything, in, in relation to the film, just felt like uh, shoving things in there until it's 90 minutes and throwing it out. You mentioned the commercial. Yes, there's the the Royal Caribbean cruise yeah, commercial the in the movie where the family goes on a cruise. And I, I think he was even looking right at the camera. They show this getting on the boat, and the guy's like, "Welcome to the Royal Caribbean cruise." And then there's just this montage of beauty shots, and it is a commercial. Yeah. It is literally a commercial. Yeah. And then at the end too, with Dunkin' Donuts, the it, same it, thing. I mean, the Royal Caribbean stuff serves as uh, you know ex establishing shots for that scene, but. Yeah, the guy does look right at the camera. <laughs> Welcome to Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. Yeah. The camera goes past him, and then they show the pool. And the, and there's even lines in the dialogue. Jill's like, oh, there's a pool on here? How many other wonderful, fun things are there to do on this ship? Yeah. And and every background extra in that scene is like beautiful young people, where it's like, fun. We want to have the fun. I'm sure Royal Caribbean uh, representatives were on set going, well, another example is during the, the movie theater scene, which is seen in the trailer, where it's a wide shot of everyone there and just awkwardly holds on them for a long time before anything happens in the scene. And there's strategically placed Coke uh, uh, labels right across, the whole way across the frame. Yeah, and then, and then there's a scene at the end Jill brings home uh, tons of boxes of Oreos for some reason. For some reason, she needs lot, a whole case of Oreos. Yeah, lots and lots of Oreos. Um, and even the very first scene in the movie. The very first scene in the movie is like the biggest turnoff. <laughs> so, well, Adam Sandler's character is, uh, as we said early, very conveniently an ad executive. Um, and there's a shot where it's, it's a two-shot of him talking to someone else. They're both in profile. And directly in the middle of the frame is just rows and rows of Pepto-Bismol. And the, the rest of the shot is sort of drab and, and muted colors and just these bright pink bottles. Where your attention goes right to it. He's talking about how his sister Jill is going to visit and he goes, oh, I have a stomach ache. And then drinks a Pepto-Bismol. Like, yeah. you know, the joke was he, he wanted he, he, his stomach ache so bad from thinking about his sister Jill that he had to drink a Pepto Bismol, but at the same time it's her. So it's, it's an ad very uh, uh, faintly disguised as a joke. Very faintly. Which is, this whole movie has that like illusion of like, we're going to make you think you're watching a comedy film. Yeah. And it's just, it's so horribly manipulative. And at the end of the film is Al Pacino in a hilarious Dunkin' Donuts commercial, which yeah. is him dancing and singing a song because Al Pacino rhymes with cappuccino or something. Something. Um, so it's this ad and you feel like you're actually watching the commercial because you are in the logic of the movie, but you are also being advertised to in the theater. So then, then it's like, oh, I want to kill myself. Yeah. They show the uh, American Airlines area in LAX with all the American Airlines signs. It's just one after um, the other right in your those, face. Those are all the kind of products in the film that are uh, just sort of floating around in the in the ether of, of schlock <laughs> of, of this movie. There are also products in the movie that are more 
woven in with the fabric of, of, of the film. Yeah. Um, which you may not have noticed, but your brain did. Jack and Jill was produced by Columbia Pictures. And as you can see, Columbia Pictures is owned by Sony. Sony is, of course, the Japanese conglomerate company that, uh, that owns Sony Pictures. So um, you'll see a lot of Sony products in the film mysteriously appear. <laughs> uh, Adam Sandler, uh, even though he's a, a hip ad guy, uh, works on a Sony VAIO. Yes, computer. a laptop, which is very convenient because then you have the back of the, yeah. of the computer just facing the camera at all times. Does anyone work on PC products anymore? I don't know. Uh, he doesn't have a Mac or an iPad or any of those devices. He has a Sony VAIO. They also have a, a PC in their home, which is a Sony PC. Um, he has a, uh, uh, an MP3 player in the film, that's a Sony. And uh, Jill talks on a Sony cell phone, I believe it's an Ericsson. And, that, and what's also interesting is that the Happy Madison production offices are located on the Sony Pictures studio lot hmm. in Culver City, California. Okay. Um, so it's not a coincidence that Sony products were also in the film. So as we mentioned, Coca-Cola is also featured prominently in the film. It's in the theater scene where you see uh, five or six Coke logos all facing the camera conveniently. <laughs> um, there's a little backstory to that. In 82, Coca-Cola actually purchased Columbia Pictures, mm. which is the distributor of Jack and Jill. Oh, yeah. And then Coca-Cola launched TriStar Pictures, you know, the, the, the Pegasus yeah. with the Minx, uh, which was a joint venture between them, HBO, and CBS. Mm. Uh, CBS, of course, produces the television show The Price is Right, which is also featured prominently in the film. Yes, yes. And Coca-Cola also had a short run producing television. It was Coca-Cola Telecommunications, and one of the programs that they produced was The Price is Right oh. as well. And this was one of their first run syndication programs in collaboration with Columbia Pictures Television. Oh. Isn't all this fascinating? <laughs> I, I, I have nothing against advertising. I really don't. Sure. Um, I have something against making really bad movies or tricking people. I don't like tricking people. Advertisements are on TV. They are what they are. Advertisements that have uh, some sort of entertainment value to them are a plus. But when you make a movie with this purpose, and, and the more sinister thing is, is, is what, what our lawyer made us read that statement, <laughs> um, is that we're, we're questioning um, that this isn't a giant Ponzi scheme or a giant fleecing scam. This whole movie, like, there's no reason this should be $79 million. This is just a cheap, cheap looking no. movie. Yes. But every minor character is played by one of Adam Sandler's friends. Yeah, so this is what you're saying, Jay. You're saying that Adam Sandler says, Hi, I'm Adam Sandler. I have lots of pull. I have lots of box office hits, not necessarily in the critical uh, definition of hit, but sure. in the financial definition of hit. I can make some phone calls. We'll, we'll put together this, this really cheaply made product called Jack and Jill. Yeah. Um, I can raise this budget for it, X amount of dollars, and I'm going to call up all of my old friends and give them horribly inflated paychecks to be in it and at the same time get giant checks from big name advertisers to also give us money. We'll cash all these paychecks and we'll release this bomb into the theaters <laughs> and who gives a shit what the critics say. Yeah. People will go watch it. These, these, these dummies that like Adam Sandler films that giggle at farts and people falling down the stairs and everyone will be happy. And, and basically, that's the truth. The, that's, only, the only people that aren't happy are those that actually give a crap about film as an art form. Mm -hmm. and, and that's us, and, and we didn't pay to see this movie. We should point that out, yeah. We, we, people say like, oh, how can you criticize this movie? You pay to see it, you're supporting it. We didn't pay to see this thing. Um, I would never go and watch this for an entertainment purpose, but that's just my choice. Yeah. But people that are on the fence, that are like, well, I liked Adam Sandler before, but I have a choice to see this this film that I don't really know much about that's been getting a lot of good reviews, and I but I've never heard of the actors. I'll just go see Jack and Jill. Yeah. Because I've heard of Adam Sandler. Those are the people that are really to blame for this problem.
People review this movie and go, oh, it's just a dumb comedy. It's just a dumb comedy. Don't watch it or watch it. Yeah. But really, uh, Occupy Wall Street guys, go west. <laughs> because, you know, I, I know you, don't, you can't control what the banks do with your money and the banks and, and, and the Wall Street guys are all, they, they make money. But this is, a, this is a different version of that. Yeah. It's a different version of, of taking money and, and, you know, doing the corporate bailouts, giving bonuses. Everyone complains about CEO bonuses. Adam Sandler is giving a huge bonus to David Spade for doing nothing for five <laughs> minutes. And, the, and this is all theoretical, of course. Right. And, and, and very much we're not implying any kind of criminal wrongdoing, which this isn't criminal, but it's very, very unethical. Money fleecing and, and horrible things goes on everywhere, not just in Wall Street. The, the Wall Street stuff is happening in Hollywood. <laughs> there are, there are, Adam Sandler is a one percenter and he's stealing all the money too. Yeah. And it's just our opinion, yeah. but that's what we think happened because you look at, like, look at the price tag of $80 million or you take a movie like Super, which we saw earlier this year, which cost like $3 million to make. Something like that, three or four million. And looks a million times better, production value wise. Yeah. It doesn't look like a cheap, SNL skit, and somehow this film cost almost eighty million dollars to make. And, yeah. and what what is Adam Sandler's base? Uh, he gets about twenty million a picture. So right there, that's and that's just his fee for acting. Yeah. He also writes these films. Oh, okay, yeah, so... yeah. You get checks from different departments. Yeah, yeah. So, so right off the bat, just his fee for for standing around in a wig. And, and doing this little amount of work as possible is 25% of this entire budget. Yeah. So you have crew, you have film costs, you have editing and all, all that, but um, but something like, you know, a super or other lower budgeted films, even bigger motion pictures can cost under $5 million. So it's, it's, it's misappropriation. And that's why everyone loves Adam Sandler, even, uh, uh, even David Letterman was raving about this film. Here's what happened. I saw this movie a week ago. And I'm I, so happy. And I so loved it so much. I can't. And believe. then, and then, I, uh, that's all. <laughs> that's all I can think about was was the movie and how what a great success it will be for you and, and your friends who make the movie. Honest to God, and we're we're trying to arrange uh, uh, another screening for the staff. That's a this this thing is going to be enormous. Yeah. Who is on CBS Networks, which also broadcasts The Price Is Right. Um, Adam Sandler is the most likable guy in Hollywood, and uh, now I know why. I wonder how much longer this can go on for. Well, Not I wonder my how rant. Much, I wonder. But, no, no. I wonder how much more transparent it can get. This, this is when, an all new. This is this is a new low, and I, I think I said that about uh, Transformers Two when I first saw that, where it's like I've never seen such a level of pandering. But this isn't even pandering. This is something different. But it's a new, uh, sunk to a new level. You know, watching Jack and Jill makes me respect Michael Bay on so many levels. Because Michael Bay, the movies are two and a half hours long. They're filled with, with modern day visual effects. Yeah. I mean, his movies are nice looking. Yeah. Um, yeah. He cares about, uh, you know, how they look. He uh, likes action. He, he likes filming action. He likes action. action. He likes, he likes Ladies, attractive women running around, you know, like... What do you get out of something like Jack and Jill? What is Adam Sandler like? Adam Sandler likes to show up in jeans and a t-shirt and, and stand in a medium shot. Well, it was, it was amazing, because we both kind of had a similar reaction throughout the movie when there was that realization that it was far more nefarious than just being... Yeah a dumb, bad comedy. Because I think we went into it with the intention of just, let's just go see this movie and rip it apart. Yes. For fun. And it turned into a much more depressing experience. It was, it was like I, 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 I grew up a little. Hmm. I, I gained an extra little bit of knowledge about the world. It's like when you learn that there is no Santa Claus. Hmm. Or, or, you know, when you learn some truth about reality. And, and me, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't call myself a naive person. Sure. Um, I, I, I kind of seem to be aware of a lot of stuff that's going on, but I actually felt a little less naive after watching this movie and go, oh, not just that some movies are, are quickly made, cheaply made products, like, like for example, uh, the, uh, What's Your Number? 
Yeah. A movie like that's cheaply made product, quickly put together, shoved out in the theater, generate a profit, move on. Yeah. Not that movies are like that, but that a filmmaker and and a movie could be used as as a way to make everybody money that have nothing to do with the movie to kind of fleece money out of out of a system as a, uh, I, I, I hesitate to use the word scam but the movie is a scam and I kind of sat there and I went wow this isn't a movie yeah this is a scam and and it's interesting to see a piece of entertainment that's a front. It's like the Italian restaurant that, that, that the mob is, uses as a front to, to, and they're cutting cocaine in the back yeah. and there's trucks pulling up with guns and stuff. And it's like realizing that that Italian restaurant isn't there to cook you a meal. And, and if you want to have a life altering experience where you go into the theater and you see something on the big screen that is as transparent as a window um, you should watch Jack and Jill because uh, it will change your life. Mm -hmm. Jack and Jill. Do you and Daddy have twin powers? Some twins can feel when the other ones hurt. I didn't feel it. A little hard. No, Jill, stop it. He's kidding. What? Oh! You hear that, Daddy? I actually did feel something there. Pride in my son. So, Jay, what does it feel like to be dead inside? Eh, at least now I can get that job I've always wanted at the post office. What? 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 Oh. Oh. Somebody's here. Apparently. Oh, hold on, I'm coming! Wonder who it'll be? I don't know. It's always someone. Mm-hmm. Hi! Why, it's my sister, Harriet Plinkin. Hi, Harry. I'm in town for Thanksgiving. Oh, I brought all uh -huh. of my dogs so they could play with your cat. I'm going to be uh -huh. staying for eight months. I can't wait to do all of the fun things there are to do in New Jersey. I can't wait to see the Cockroach Museum. And I can't wait to see the junkyard and the rats. How are you doing, yeah. Harry? Yeah, You're a little bit balder than you were last time I saw you. Oh, God. oh and you're so oh, fat. They're so crazy. While you're here, while I'm so here, I said that wrong. Oh, oh well. <laughs> oh, listening to these two gives me heartburn. Oh. You know, I'm in fact that I kind of want to adopt an Indian child. Oh, that's nice. Take him into my family. You know, so I can start a sweat. Oh, yeah, I just love listening to your dumb ideas. I don't know why you'd be getting an Indian child. Ah, relief. Our incontinent mother says hello. Yeah, or at huh? least that's what my medium tells me. Yeah, huh? She charges me $800 a minute oh, to talk to our sweet mother. Isn't that crazy? Mm. Oh, I see you've got some people over fixing your VCR. Mm. You getting a good deal on that? The people fixing my rotary phone are taking forever. They drink all the time and they oh. don't do anything. That's like a weird parallel Lover. between us. We have lots nice. in common. Isn't that oh. crazy? You're such a stupid bitch. You always gotta come to my fucking house when you're on vacation. Can't you go to Florida or somewhere nice? It's fucking New Jersey. Who the fuck does that? Whatever. Cunt. Mm.